All right, so this is an epiretinal membrane removal, uh, just the basic steps, and I really do like to go back and remove the internal limiting membrane after I've peeled up your retinal membrane. I found that when I didn't do that previously, the recurrence rates for epiretinal membranes were close to 20%. And we really don't want to have patients have a recurrence of their epiretinal membrane and need more surgery. So I go back and peel the ILM and I found that my recurrence rates are well less than 5% and probably closer to 2 to 3% as far as recurrent ERMs that require reoperation. I really do like to stain with ICG. Here you can see I'm putting in the ICG. I'm gonna remove that from the fluid filled eye. I mix that ICG with D5W. It creates a heavy ICG that settles onto the macula. After completing that, we can see we have negative staining of the epiretinal membrane. So the ICG stains the internal limiting membrane around the epiretinal membrane, but can't stain the internal limiting membrane under the epiretinal membrane. And this allows us to identify where the epiretinal membrane is. I try to start at the junction of that ILM and epiretinal membrane where you have the staining and no staining. I didn't like my first grab along the superior temporal or excuse me, inferior temporal arcade, but here I get a nice healthy purchase of the epiretinal membrane. Change a little bit of my color contrast so that I don't quite have as much contrast there and as much detail. I found that was a little bit distracting in this case. And able to grab that epiretinal membrane and after a couple of uh, uh, different grabs, it actually comes up really nicely. You know, this epiretinal membrane, it's uh, translucent. So sometimes you have to have some memory as far as where that epiretinal membrane kind of ends up at so that when you grab it and you can go back and grab it and start peeling from the edge. So you watch the edge as you kind of release that epiretinal membrane or it slips out of your forceps that you know where to go back and re-grab. I'm using the 44 Alcon in grasping forceps. I find these are really good for ILM, which I'm going to peel after this, and pretty adequate for epiretinal membrane. 13 forceps are a little better for epiretinal membranes, but in this case I want to go back and peel the ILM and these 44s are really great for that. I'm going to restain with ICG here. Move, remove it from that fluid filled eye. And what we'll find is, is as we're removing this ICG, we now can see that there's actually already a little opening where some ep internal limb membrane came up on the back side of that epiretinal membrane. And so we're going to go in and grab at that edge. And we want to get this internal limb membrane up throughout the macula. It just decreases the scaffolding that the epiretinal membrane cells can reproliferate on and can be a a real game changer for our patients. Um, it starts to head in the wrong direction, so I'm going to try to redirect it. Can't quite get it to redirect the way I want, so I'm going to go back and, and grab in a different area and kind of peel it um, up towards my light pipe and then around the macula. And you can see here it's this pinch and peel technique. Um, comes up pretty nicely. Does tend to shred sometimes, and so you do have to go back and re-grab. And uh, I utilize the technique of flipping the... Uh, ILM that's in my forceps off with my light pipe. So I try to never leave the eye. And I certainly try not to use instrument wipes because I found that instruments wipes can sometimes get debris on the forceps. Here we're completing our ILM peeling. Take a look around with the pressed examination. Thanks for watching.